Yep, size does matter. When it comes to hollow grinding blades, that is, and the size wheel you use, let's talk about it. So lately, I've been getting a lot of questions on an old video about knowing what size wheel to use for hollow grinding. Well, you can use everything from half inch to 20 inch, 25 inch. People got large wheels. It just depends on the design of the blade and uh, what you're, you know, what you're going for there, the look you're going for. Take this knife, for example. It is going to be hollow ground. I've already did the rough grind on it. And based on the size of this wheel, which is eight inch, I can only come up close to around three quarters of an inch. Now there's online calculators. I'll post a formula here for you and you can figure it up yourself, but there's several online calculators. But what you have to look at is the size of the wheel you're using. And when you grind down to your final edge thickness, which should be around at least 20 thousandths, that's going to determine the height based on the size of the wheel. So for an eight inch wheel, I'm going to be right at three quarters, a little under three quarters of an inch because to get down to 20 thousandths, if I come up any higher, I'm going to start getting too thin in the web here where the hollow is and you'll grind through. Now you can blend with a small wheel and uh, that takes a lot of practice, but you can blend but I wouldn't recommend doing that. I would stick with the right height based on the wheel size. So I'm going to come here and uh, start grinding this one down, get it down to my edge thickness, and uh, show you how I do it, my technique. All right, I just wanted to stop and go over a couple things with you. Now, you know, I have a mark here, and once you, you can feel this groove, you find it and stay in it. That way I prevent myself from jumping up here. You know, I'm, I'm well within my mark, so I know I'm not getting too thin. Before it's over with, I'll try to have it pretty close to that mark and, you know, have the perfect height. Now I'm watching my center mark or my center of my blade here. I'm trying to keep my plunge lines even. And if you notice, I have a little overlap on this belt. That's so it can create a little curve here and I can smooth out these shoulders where the plunge lines are. I also come in here and color the blades with a marker. You don't have to use die chem, that stuff's expensive just a big blue mark or whatever color you like. I color it, I can see my previous scratches and I can come in here and get them all out where the trouble spots are. 
each grit, I will do that and clean it up. And if you use a good fresh belt every time, I try to use this belt to get me two blades and then I'll switch it out. If you don't, you can get this too hot and it can cause you to put too much pressure, get divots in here, especially if you're putting you know, a lot of pressure and you turn this blade, that's what causes belt bump. You want good even pressure, fresh cutting belt, pull it across. I'm using a rest. I'll switch out when I get to a higher grit and take this rest off and just freehand the rest of it. But however you want to do, you could actually use a jig on this style blade because it's pretty straight, whatever you use. I put this on here, gives me something to hold. That's all that's for. Gives me control. I'm old. My hands are, are kind of chunky and, and I'm just, it's easier for me to feel it. But I hope that helps explain a little bit of that. We're going to move over, grind this other side, and I've got two more of these. This is 80 CRV2, by the way. And I'm grinding post heat treat. It goes pretty smoothly. All right, let's get going this other side. I'm going to set my overlap over here and I'll move the camera over in a minute. I'm just going to come up here, find the groove, push it up in there, pull it across. Keep it cool. I can see where I'm hitting. I can see everywhere I'm getting. I've got to get in that groove. All right, let's take a look at a couple things. So I've maintained my plunge line evenness and square, centered. You wanna make sure that's all done properly. And very end of the blade or the tip, everything exits here evenly. That point is in the center of the tang and it's not off to one side. I don't know if you can see that. I'll try to get a close up here of that. Maybe that'll help. But all of that is important if you're trying to put out some quality or have quality control. One of the things that I look at is these plunge lines, are they even? Put that blade up there, look at the tip, is it coming out in the center? And you just wanna to try to do the best job you can, uh, you know, cause you're selling your knives, at least I am in this case, and uh, you're putting out, you know, quality work. So, all of that I'm watching the whole time. When I'm grinding, I'll stop, I'll look, make sure I've got this edge in the center, keeping everything square. And another reason why I color these after each grit with a marker or some, some sort is to you know see my previous grinds. But also, when you go to hand sand, this will be a breeze. 
because you won't have any big gouges and, you know, scratches in there. So uh, it's a matter of taking time, you know. It takes me, you know, a lot of people complain, it takes you too long to make a blade. Well, I can make a knife in a couple days. Like I, the last video I posted was a forged knife from a bearing. Uh, no finish work on the flats. It was forged finish and a wrapped handle. Done that in a few hours. Most of that was heat treating. You got four hours of just tempering. But, but yes, take your time, get your grinds right. Now, I'll have, when I go to hand sand this, I'll use a special tool to get in this, you know, this groove because your flat stick won't get in there. It's concaved. So I want to make sure, you know, I, I clean up everything because I'm gonna have to get in there. But you keep good crisp lines when you stay in that groove and feel that wheel. And, you know, I am following just a little bit of a curve here at the end. I'm pulling away to get it to dip up. And I make sure that my grind lines end at the same point. All of that you want to look at. A collector will look at that too. A good collector will. So take your time. So now I'm going to move up to the next grid. I'm going to color it and I'm going to get this thing ground out. Right now, when I finish this edge, it will be around 15 thousandths, maybe even 13 thousandths, which is right where I like to be. It's to make a good skinner and it is at the proper height for this wheel. All right, we've got them finished. I've got them sanded up to 400 grit. They'll be going up to 800. And uh, they'll be etched per customer request for a stone wash finish, green canvas, micarta handles. And, um, but right now I'm at around 15 thousandths on the edges, 15 to 18. And my height is dead on the money for the size wheel I used, eight inch wheel. And, uh, you know, I've, my plunge lines are square and even. I'll put some close-ups here for you. And my grind lines terminate at the same spot at the tip of the blade. The tip is in the center and looks pretty good. My radiuses and my plunge cuts are nice and smooth. Now, I wanted to mention, when I move on from a 30 grit or whatever, 50 grit belt, and up to a 120, I, I start using J-Flex belts. And uh, you could start at 220. And I let that you know, belt overlap the wheel, come in there and cut that radius. Now, a lot of people use waterfall platens to cut those radiuses on their blades. Um, but you got to remember, this is hollow ground. That waterfall platen is not going to do you any good here. This is a convex, you know, I mean a concave blade. So it's hollow. So you'll be cutting here and not in the center here with a waterfall platen. So it's a good idea to learn how to cut those radiuses with a overlap with a J-Flex belt 
and get good smooth square plunge lines. It looks really nice. But I hope you got something out of this. If you got any questions, leave them down in the comments. I appreciate you watching. I want to thank my patrons. We'll see you on the next one.